Well, welcome to Coffee with Joel for Friday. Uh, today we are outside St Andrew's Cathedral. I was here this morning earlier, um, well actually I'm recording this the day before, uh, speaking to lawyers and we just come to this wonderful passage uh, at the end of Eli Hughes' speech, which I think sums up the whole answer in terms of suffering and just glorifies God and makes me want to sing how great is our God. So let me just read this. So it's Job chapter 37 verse 14. Listen to this Job, stop and consider God's wonders. Now I'm going to go through this actually and we'll just stop each time. Stop and consider God's wonders. That's, do you do that? I mean we really need to do that. Do you know how God controls the clouds and make his lightning flash? Do you know how the clouds hang poised, those wonders of him who is perfect in knowledge? And again, stop and think. So God does wonders. God is perfect in knowledge, remember that. You who swelter in your clothes when the land lies hushed under the south wind, can you join him in spreading out the skies hard as a mirror of cast bronze? Utterly brilliant. Tell us what we should say to him. We cannot draw up our case because of our darkness. Should he be told that I want to speak? Would anyone ask to be swallowed up? Again, just how brilliant that is. We cannot draw up our case because of our darkness. The trouble is that too many people judge God as though they themselves were God, as though they, they themselves were in a position of perfection, complete in knowledge, and that they were able to do this. I mean, when I um, discuss with atheists, they'll, they'll say, God this, God this, God that. And, and I'll say to them, but your knowledge is incomplete. Your knowledge, in fact, is very, very, very limited. And then, now, verse 21, no one can look at the sun, bright as it is in the skies, after the wind has swept them clean. Out of the north he comes in golden splendor. God comes in awesome majesty. The Almighty is beyond our reach and exalted in power. In his justice and great righteousness he does not oppress. Therefore people revere him, for does he not have regard for all the wise in heart? Okay, just unpack that, even in basic principles of your own life. It's just superb. God comes in awesome majesty. We're not dealing with trivia here. We're not dealing with a concept. I've been reading Francis Schaeffer and he just reminds us again that God is not a concept or a word, but a reality, truth. <clears throat> and he's beyond our reach and exalted in power. I mean, you want to know what kind of majesty? You look at the sun and you can't because it blinds you. You see anything of the majesty of God, it is blinding. Um, He's beyond our reach, he's exalted in power, and yet he reaches down. He is beyond our reach, yet he comes to us. And then this, in his justice and great righteousness, he does not oppress. God is just and God is righteous, and he does not oppress, he cannot oppress. I, I, again, it's, Elihu's response here is to give this bigger picture now you can argue about whether how empathetic he was with Job, but what he says is surely true. Therefore people revere him, for does he not have regard for all the wise in heart? To revere God, to fear God. That's what wisdom is. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Does he not have regard for all the wise in heart? That's just, oh my goodness. Lord, make me wise, make me wise. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God. Lord, give me understanding. It's just, it's such a beautiful picture. So here we've got, in the midst of whatever circumstances you face, you have to bear this in mind. Consider God's wonders. Consider that God is perfect in knowledge. Consider that God is just and righteous. Forgive all these birds. <laughs> they consider that God is just and he is righteous and um, that he comes in awesome majesty. He's beyond our reach, yet he reaches down to us. He doesn't oppress, and we need to be wise and know him. May the Lord grant you wisdom. May I have wisdom, and may we be able to exalt in the God who feeds these birds 
and how much more will he not also feed us? God bless you and see you on Monday when the Lord speaks. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, by the way, on Sunday, I'm starting a new thing I'm going to put out on Sunday mornings that looks at some of the great songs and hymns and psalms uh, uh, and obviously has examples of them. So we'll start with the first one on Sunday. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus Nazarene. See you then. Bye.